All right, welcome to Agent Prep with Lily Hendy. Remember to tap that subscribe button and click the little bell so you get notified every time I post a new video and go ahead and like this video. And so we left off with, we are starting with construction mortgage today, vocabulary, and then we will go into national questions and state questions. Hi, I can see the bottom half of the page Okay, what I want you to be able to see is construction mortgage right here, okay? So you should be able to see the word construction mortgage, okay, and that line where my mouse is moving. Do you all see that, construction mortgage? Because if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to cancel because I don't know what's going on with uh, Facebook today. It's just not allowing me to do it on my computer. Oh. Okay, maybe... Uh, no, hold on. It keeps asking me to sign on on my... Uh, on my computer. So I'm gonna try it one more time on my computer and see if it'll work. Oh gosh, it sends me a... Nope, it's not letting me do it on my computer. Okay, so we'll continue on with this. So construction mortgage. A short-term loan used to finance the building of improvements to real estate. Okay, this is where I'm at right here, and you should be able to see that. So these construction loans, when somebody wants to build a home, the lender is not going to do a 30-year mortgage, right? Because the home's not built yet. So they do a short-term loan where they pay interest only during the construction of the home. So the buyer has to get approved, pre-approved for a 30-year loan and also for a short-term loan. And the contractor will do draws, okay, from that short-term loan whenever they need money to buy more supplies. Once the home is completed, then it'll transfer, they'll then start the 30-year mortgage and complete with that. This may cost to have two closing, sometimes one will work, so it just depends on the lender. All right, construction, constructive eviction. An action, action or inaction by a landlord that renders a property uninhabitable, forcing a tenant to move out with no further liability for rent. So that is constructive eviction. So if the apartment is not livable, then you know they'll be able to get out with no further liability or the landlord has to put them up in a hotel because they have paid uh, the, the rent. Okay, constructive notice. Notice of a fact given by making the fact part of the public record. All persons are responsible for knowing information, whether or not they have actually seen the rector, the record. So constructive notice, it's when it's posted on uh, public. Okay, contingency. A condition, let's see, can you see that? Yeah. A condition that might be met before a contract is legally binding. A satisfactory home inspection report from a qualified home inspector is an example of a common type of contingency. So during the option period, a buyer can do their due diligence by doing home inspections, termite, um, they call it uh, uh, wood and fest, uh, wood, WDI, wood destroying insect inspection, or they need to do a roof inspection, plumbing, anything is done during the option period where their money is not, their earnest money is not at risk. 
Uh, other contingencies might be, well, I've got to sell my home before I can buy, and that'll be up to the seller to allow that. Okay? Contract. An agreement between two or more legally competent parties to do or to refrain from doing some legal act in exchange for a consideration. So anytime there are two parties in negotiation and they're competent, they're not under 18 and they're not under medication or not being forced, then it becomes a legal, a legal contract and there's a consideration. That consideration doesn't have to be money, right? It could be a promise, it could be other property, as long as there's some kind of consideration given to the seller. And now it, be, it becomes a bilateral contract. So you have a contract when it comes to a one to four uh, residential contract, a lease agreement, commercial contract, and uh and so also a buyer rep agreement okay it's an agreement between the agency and the buyer to where they become a client okay um okay i went too high contract for deed a contract for the sale of a parcel of real estate in which the buyer makes periodic payments to the seller and receives the title to the property only after all of a substantial part or a substantial part of the purchase price has been paid or regular payments have been made for one year or longer. So a contract deed, the title does not convey. So uh, let me see here, it says here, the buyer makes periodic payments to the seller and receives title once all the uh, all the debt is being paid. So it is legal, okay, to do a contract for deed. However, the seller, the owner, keeps title. Once the 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 uh, the loan is paid, kind of like a promissory note, then the seller will convey the title, sign the warranty deed, and convey it to the borrower. Conventional loan, a loan that is neither insured nor guaranteed by an agency or government. So conventional loan, the buyers are having to put down at least 3%, 5%, 20%. If they don't want to pay uh, private mortgage insurance, then they'll need a loan of uh, 80%. Okay? That is a conventional loan. It's not guaranteed by VA and it's not insured by FHA. Because remember, FHA loans are insured, VA loans are guaranteed. Conven conversion option. An option in an adjustable rate mortgage to convert it to a fixed rate mortgage. So at the end of a, an arm, that's what it is, adjustable rate mortgage, and they're usually an odd number of years. One year, three years, five, seven, and then there's a 10 year. They don't do a nine year, they do a 10 year. So at the end of that adjustable rate period, then the lender may convert it to a fixed rate mortgage. And it's the best thing to do for buyers because interest rates can fluctuate and then they won't be able to make a payment or won't be able to afford the payment. A convertible arm, adjustable rate mortgage. Know those acronyms. An adjustable rate mortgage that allows the borrower to change the arm to a fixed rate mortgage at a specified time. So they had the option, okay, to change this arm into a fixed rate mortgage. And so that has to be specified when they apply for that arm. Adjustable rate mortgage, know those acronyms. Conveyance, the transfer of title from the grantor to the grantee. So who signs the title? The owner, the grantor, the seller, and the grantee is the one that's receiving the title. Once they have the title, it's been received and acknowledged and recorded, now they become the grantor. Cooperative, a form of property ownership in which a cooperation owns a multi-unit building and 
stockholders of the corporation may lease and occupy individual units of the building through a proprietary lease. So a cooperative could be like what? A, uh, what do they call it? Uh, gosh, when you get a share uh, and be able to go to vacation, a timeshare, okay? That's a cooperative. Corporation, a legal entity which potentially perpetual existence that is created with potentially perpetual existence that is created and owned by shareholders who appoint a board of directors to direct the business affairs of a corporation. Now, when you decide to become a company, you can become a uh, LLC, limited liability company, or a corporation. And if you're a corporation, a sub S corporation, uh, a sub C, then there has to be a board of directors and that corporation becomes a one. It is a unit. So when the four different types of ownerships, right? Several T, uh, tenants in common, joint tenancy and tenants by the entirety. Well, several T can be a corporation. It's one. Okay. Several T is one person or one entity. Cost approach. So this is when doing comparables, okay? So you have the cost approach. This is when the appraiser, okay, is determining the value of a property. You can use a cost approach, you can use a comparable approach, or you can use an income approach, right? So the comparable is the market analysis approach, the market approach. Those are the three different approaches that an appraiser will use in, in order to determine the value of a property. An appraisal method whereby the value of property is calculated by estimating the cost of constructing a comparable building, subtracting depreciation and adding land value. Okay, because the land is part of the real estate. So the land is the real estate, everything above it is the improvement. It's the building. So they've got to look at what it's going to cost and material in today's time. So if your home were to get burned after you have home, uh, home insurance, they're going to have to come up with this. What does it cost in today's market to reproduce that home, even though it's an old home and it's not worth that much on the market? Well, you're going to get a brand new home at today's cost. So that is getting uh, homeowners insurance with what they call it um, current market value, which will cost a little bit more, but you wanna make sure that's the type of insurance that we have as an own homeowner. Counter offer. An offer submitted in response to an, off an offer. So you counter initial offer received. It has the effect of overriding the initial offer. So when a, um, when a seller receives an offer, okay, they have one of four things that they can do, right? They can counter, they can reject, they can accept, or they can think about it. So when they counter the original offer, that means it pretty much uh, is overwritten. That one is no longer valid. It is now uh, taken over by the new offer and it could be a minor change okay it could be a price change it could be adding a home warranty it could be extending the closing date but part of the terms have changed and so uh i was trying to put it on a, a book to make it higher because i have it on a little a little tripod let me see if i can get a, a thicker book so that all right okay credit wait a minute where is the word credit Oh, that's not working. It has to be way on top. Okay, I've got to lift up the phone. Credit. 
an agreement in which a borrower receives something of value in exchange for a promise to repay the lender. So when you get a credit card, okay, you're agreeing to repay. You're making a promise to pay that charge. Credit history, a record of an individual's repayment of debt. Okay, so you get a credit score that goes up to what, 850? And the lenders expect a certain credit score in order to loan money. And depending on the credit score and the debt to income ratio, they'll determine what kind of interest rate you'll receive. Cul-de-sac, a dead end street that widens at the end, creating a circular turnaround area. Right, so at the end of the street, those homes usually have a nice demand because there's no traffic. There's no pass-through traffic. It's the, at the end of the street. Great for families who have children. Curtsy. The statutory or common law right of a husband to all or part of real estate owned by his deceased wife, regardless of will provisions recognized in some states. So curtsy. It's almost like having a dowry. But this is where the husband uh, inherits, okay? all the wife's property, real estate owned by his wife. Curtilage, area of land occupied by a building. It's outbuildings and yard, either actually enclosed or considered enclosed. You almost think of cartilage, this is curtilage. Area of land occupied by a building, it's outbuildings, yard, either actually enclosed or considered enclosed okay damages the amount of money recovered by a person who has been injured by the actions of another so this is if someone got injured at the property the homeowner's insurance okay would cover those injuries they call it personal injuries datum a specific point used in survey so when they're doing a survey, they're starting at a certain point until they go all the way around the property and come to the beginning point. So they do a 360 loop. Although it may not be a loop, right? It's a, a straight line to an, a corner, another straight line. Some home, some properties are rectangular, square, or irregular. Irregular is when they have curves added to them or the shape of a triangle it doesn't have four exact sides dba the abbreviation for doing business as if you choose not to have a limited liability uh, corporation however you want to name give your business a different name you can call it um let's see what's today Wednesday real estate. So you as, um, let's see, let's, who is on here? Leonena Avila can, can say, I am doing business as Wednesday real estate. So that's a DBA and it would be registered with Trek and with the county. Debt, an amount owed to another. So at the closing of a real estate property, there will be debts and credits on a settlement statement. Decedent, decedent, a person who dies. Ded dedication, the donation of private property by its owner to a governmental body for public use. Okay, so donation of private property. So an individual decides to donate their land to a government body, okay, the city, the county, or some other for public use. And they have to meet certain conditions. If they violate one of those conditions, they'll lose the use of that property. Because it's donated with certain conditions. It could be donated to build a school, to be a park, a resort, whatever it might be used for, or a church. So it cannot violate the um, restrictions that the owner put on that property or that government body will lose it. 
deed, a written document that when property signed and delivered conveys title to real property from the grantor, the owner, to the grantee, the buyer. See, properly signed and delivered. So it has to be acknowledged, right? It has to be delivered. It's not just signed. There are certain questions that says, when does the property convey? When it is signed and recorded, when it is signed and uh, posted on the newspaper, or when it's signed and delivered and acknowledged by the receiver. That's when it's considered conveyed. And it's a warranty deed, special uh, warranty deed, or a quit claim deed. Special warranty deed and the warranty deed both have uh, protection. The quit claim deed has no guarantee. Okay, there was no search done on that. That is the simplest way of conveying property with no insurance of protection as to whether there were any liens or anything like that attached to that property. That is typically done to change the name of a person to um, convey between family when you know that there's nothing on there and you've already researched the title. Deed in lieu. Deed in lieu of what? A foreclosure instrument used to convey title to the lender when the borrower is in default. The borrower, the, right, the buyer of that property, of the home, of the land, is in default and wants to avoid foreclosure. So in the state of Texas, we have a deed of trust. So if that person, like today during COVID, were to happen to lose their home because they can't afford the payments, they lost a job, they became ill or family died, then they'll return it to the lender instead of the lender foreclosing on it. If there are more than one loans on that property, the lender typically will not do it. It has to be a single loan. Well, I shouldn't say has. It's up to the lender, but typically in my experience, it's had to be a single loan. Okay, deed of trust. A deed in which the title to a property is transferred to a third party trustee to secure repayment of a loan. Third party mortgage arrangements. So again, state of Texas has deed of trust instead of a mortgage. So in the deed of trust, there are three parties involved. The lender, who is the beneficiary, the third party, who is the trustee, and the mortgager, okay? That's the borrower. That's the buyer, but they're now a borrower. They've already bought, okay? So they are the mortgagor. So that is, in the deed of trust, there are three parties. Deed restriction. And so that deed of trust explains in detail what steps the lender will take or the trust or the trustee actually when a borrower has defaulted or what rights the borrower also has against the lender. Lender can usually change a lot of things. Borrower can't. Because why? Because they got money from the lender. Deed restrictions, an imposed restriction for the purpose of limiting the use of land, such as the size or type of improvements to be allowed, also called a restrictive covenant. We used to call them CCRs, covenant conditions and restrictions. So the city zoning has its own city uh, restrictions. However, a subdivision will have tighter restrictions gen uh, created by the developer, by the builder. So those are additional uh, restrictions imposed for limiting the use of land, that it has to be a certain type of land. You can't have manufactured homes. You can't have two-story buildings. You must have a garage, two-car garage, sidewalk, driveway, you know, fence. Those are all considered um, restrictions, okay, by that deed and they have bylaws so they end up having a homeowners association not always um, but somebody has to be able to enforce them default the failure to perform a contractual duty right so this can be in a contract between um, the principal and the broker between the buyer and the seller between the landlord and the tenant so both parties have to perform right they signed and it ends at a certain date. 
Okay, let's see, where are we here? I'm looking at my phone to make sure that you're able to see whatever I, okay, so that was default. All right, De defeasance clause. A clause in a mortgage that renders it void where all obligations have been fulfilled. So once the obligation of the mortgager has been fulfilled, the lender will provide a release of liens. And so it is a clause in the mortgage, okay, that renders it void. It's no longer valid when all the obligation being all the financial obligation or the transferring of collateral have been fulfilled. Deficiency judgment, a personal claim against a borrower when mortgage property is foreclosed and sale of the property does not produce sufficient funds to pay off the mortgage. Deficiency judgments may be, prohib may be prohibited in some circumstances by anti-deficiency protection. Back in the, um, when all the prime, uh, subprime loans, you know, were we're in in 2005, 6, 7 to 11. There were a lot of foreclosures. A lot of banks went out of business also because they made subprime loans and then the buyers could not, the borrowers could not afford to make the loans. When the payments, um, the interest went up and the, mar the market went down, the properties depreciated and the property was no longer worth the value of the loan. So the government put in place a mortgage, uh, a mortgage protection law against the lender getting that deficiency, the difference between the money owed and the current value, only if it was their primary residence. So uh, it was called the mortgage, uh, mortgage, forgiveness, mortgage Forgiveness Act of 2007. And it stayed in place I believe until 2012 it was extended delinquency failure to make mortgage or loan payments when payments are due so if they don't pay then they're gonna go to get a foreclosure okay and follow the instructions of the deed of trust density zoning a zoning ordinance that restricts the number of houses or dwelling units that can be built per acre in one in a particular area, such as a su subdivision. So there's different types of zonings like R1 is residential, meaning one residence per lot. You know, um, R2 or R3, you're allowed to have multiple residents. Then you have commercial, then you have uh, industrial and then you have zoning uh, well churches can be built basically anywhere residential or commercial zoning and so there are limited commercial zoning there are multiplex multiplex zoning so it's residential but it's multiplex considered commercial but not commercial to where they could build a bar or some other type of business like that and there has to be a buffer a space of land between let's say a residential zoning or a commercial or industrial zoning and so they limit how the density how populated an area can be by that density zoning depreciation a loss in value due to a physical due to physical deterioration functional or external obsolescence, right? So there's three different types of uh, value determinations, physical deterioration, functional or external obsolescence. External obsolescence is they can't, the value of the property cannot be changed because there's a railroad track right next to you, there's an expressway, so you can't change no matter what you do to the home, you're not going to change the value. Okay. Functional and physical deterioration. So the house has deteriorated because it's really old. So upgrades are down in order to improve the value. Functional, let's say it's uh, the, uh, it doesn't meet the functions of the current neighborhood. All the other new homes are three bedrooms, four bedrooms, and yours is only two bedrooms. So what would you have to do? You can fix the physical deterioration and the functional 
depreciation values of the property because functional you can uh, add to the property okay you can add another bathroom you can add another bedroom you can increase the square footage you can make it two-story external obsolescence there's nothing we'll be able to do to stop it from depreciating it's because of external the environmental impact Descent, the transfer of property to an owner's heirs when the owner dies into state. In is within a will, right? Let's see, within, without. So that's without a will. And um, when the owner dies into state. So it says when in doubt, right, you go and... Oops, it's on my other screen. Hold on. I got to move it over here. Okay. So you can real quickly, instead of looking it up on your book, into state versus test state, right? So test state means that a valid will exist. Into state, I'll tell my students within, without. Okay, in, within, without, so it's without a will. And that's how I remember it, within, without. In test state, it has a will. Okay, where was I? Oh, descent, okay, can you see that? Can you see descent? I have to be careful it doesn't, uh, I don't squirrel out of the page. Devise, the transfer of title to real estate by will. So it is a device, almost like an instrument. So it's the transfer of title to real estate by will. Devise, receive, right? You have the giver and you have the receiver, the E-E -E and the O-R. The only time that it doesn't work is when you're talking about mortgagor and mortgagee. The mortgagee is the lender. They're receiving the money, right? For the property. Devisee, one who receives a bequest of real estate by will. So they're receiving uh, ownership, okay, a transfer of uh, property through a will, devisee, and that is the person receiving it. The devisor is the grantor, it's the owner of the real estate. And they're doing it with a will, right? A device, transfer title of real estate by a will. Okay, uh, so I've got to lift the phone up. All right. Okay, well, it is time to go into national questions, okay? All right, welcome to Agent Prep with Lily Hendy. Remember to tap that subscribe button and click the little bell so you get notified every time I post a new video and go ahead and like this video.